although this Norwegian garden is tiny, only 150 square meters, I've incorporated two small lawns into its design. They form the hearts of the west and east gardens and are a direct tribute to the front and rear lawns once so popular in England. With the lawn established, regular mowing is perhaps the most important aspect of lawn care. For these small garden lawns, I think a manual or push mower gives the best results, as well as being environmentally friendly. But the sound of a lawn being mown with a traditional cylinder mower is rare these days. The mechanical clipping sound made by the cylinder blades has been substituted with the whining of electric mowers or the roar of powerful petrol-driven rotary mowers. These supposed labour-saving mowers produce often substandard results, whilst polluting the environment with their carbon emissions and their noise. I use an old Qualcast Panther to mow both lawns. It's a traditional hand push cylinder mower with a 30 centimetre cutting width. The principal advantage a cylinder mower has over a rotary or hover mower is that it cuts the grass plants rather than tearing them. A six-bladed cylinder rotates against a steel strike plate which I set to the desired cutting height. This design makes many more cuts per metre than a rotary mower, giving a finer finish. A rear-mounted roller accentuates the classic striped finish that is so admired. The roller also permits the mower to be pushed over and along the traditional lawn edge, a useful feature which distinguishes it from side-wheeled versions of the cylinder mower. The front-mounted grass box assures all clippings are collected too, which helps prevent a build-up of thatch on the lawns and subsequently prevents damage from pests and diseases. Here, the lawns and edges are cut almost every day from May to September to between 10 and 20 millimetres depending on the time of year. Each lawn takes only about five minutes to mow, including cutting the edges and putting away the mower. It's worth remembering that the smaller the garden is, the easier the lawn is to maintain. I use the following procedures when mowing the lawns. Whenever possible, I mow when the grass is dry, but that's impossible to do every day in Bergen. I'm happy if I can mow at least three times a week. I'll do a visual check that the lawn surface is free from stones, gravel and children's toys and other debris. Then I check the blades are set to the correct height. I aim to remove no more than one third of the total grass height with each cut. I always use the removable front mounted grass collection box to prevent thatch buildup. And finally, but very importantly, I vary the cutting direction every time I mow, always mowing in two directions, crossing the stripes at right angles to one another. The stripes are only temporary, and variety can be introduced by mowing different patterns, shapes and even letters into the lawn. Here I had some fun cutting the logo from my website, engelskaga.com, into the lawn, and on another occasion mowing around the letters instead. Traditional lawn edging is all about tidiness. Not only does it look excellent when done well, but it's practical too. Having a distinct boundary between a lawn and border or path makes lawn care easier and helps prevent grass invading borders and paths too. In fact, when using a cylinder mower like mine, it's the only sensible way to enable mowing right up to and over the lawn edge without risking damage to the strike plate and blades of the mower. The traditional method for creating a lawn edge involves simply cutting the turf with a garden spade or special edging iron either by following a guide wire or simply using eye measurement. Due to damage from heavy rainfall and winter erosion, I chose to install EverEdge, the flexible steel lawn edging system from the UK, and the results I think speak for themselves. The Spear and Jackson edging shears I used to maintain the edges were my grandfather's, and have certainly hundreds of edging miles on their clock. They've been sharpened many times and still cut wonderfully well. In use for well over 60 years, they've cut garden edges in the English counties of Oxfordshire and Essex, and during the last decade, under my ownership, in the Norwegian counties of Møre Romsdal and Hordaland. <laughs>